Today, I want to make a personal bid to several of North Carolina's leaders. We're here in a radio station. We just did a radio show. Pastor Andre is on the radio in South Africa, and I just had the opportunity to interview him uh, here, so that's why we have all these mics. But we had a very strategic meeting this morning with Rob Rogers, a, a dear friend of mine who you all know. And so this message is to Dan Forrest, Pat McCrory, Melissa Dunlap, Harold Dixon, and Dr. Harold Morrison. Pastor Andre has been given another word to keep us safe. Once he got here on this trip, and he flies back to South Africa tomorrow, when he got here, um, he preached a message, and unfortunately, it was a warning about disaster, and the next day, the tornado hit the elementary school in Oklahoma, and I think, even though he might look a little tough, he cried for quite a while because it's one thing, as you said, to preach about um, judgment and then to see it happen. But your message is not about judgment. Your, your message is about a solution. So I want you to share that with these people. Okay, so let's, let's go to the beginning. And here's the issue. America's under judgment because of the three major issues, which are the fact that um, the abortion factor is, is keeps doing its rounds and never comes to some kind of solution. The second thing, of course, is because of the homosexual agenda. And the third thing, of course, is the fact that uh, you don't want the Lord anywhere in your courthouses or in the schools. And I went to the Lord and the Lord told me one morning, America's under judgment. And I said, but Lord, does that mean that you take your bone arrows and you shoot people or do you strike them with lightning? What do you do? I don't understand the concept of judgment. And the Lord simply said, I withdraw. And when he withdraws his presence, then you're at the mercy of the enemy and he comes to rob, steal, kill, and destroy. Well, and we I, kicked him out of the school system and said, we don't want to have any more school prayer. Well, here was the deal. It was one thing for me to talk about this stuff. It was another thing for me to see it on TV, the 10 children that died in Oklahoma. And I just began to cry. I mean, I was a basket case for a day because now I'm seeing death and destruction. And I'm saying, Lord, what, what is this? And he just said, but they don't want me in the schools. They're not invoking my protection. How can I protect them? So prayer is protection. Absolutely. And if you say, uh, if the scripture says, knock, in the, knock and um, he who hears my voice and he opens the door, I will come into him. So there's a point where man has to invoke, open the door and say, Lord, come into this situation and then there'll be protection. So nobody prayed over the school. Nobody prayed over the children. So you had loss of life. Right. Okay. But, okay, now, so I'm sure... Some of the teachers were there praying, but you're talking about an authoritative um, invoking that allows prayer in the okay, school. Okay, so let, let me use a historical uh, mm -hmm. uh, story. The North and the South were at war with one another. The North never won a battle for the first two years of that war. In what country? In here in the United States. That's okay. why I'm going to use that story. The Civil War. Then Lincoln says, let's have a day of prayer, fasting, and humiliation. From that day, the North never lost a battle. The South lost everything. And at the time, Stonewall Jackson died. So the righteous man who was protecting the South was removed out of the picture. What the South didn't do is call for a day of fasting and prayer and humiliation. Now, wow, the, you're saying because Lincoln declared that day of fasting and prayer, his the, side won. The North won. Now, yes. here's what the wow. deal is. The deal is it's up to the king to declare the day. If you look at the book of Kings and you look at all these old kings that were around in Israel, the kings who called the people to fast and pray were the kings that had most of them 40 years of generous prosperity living. Mm -hmm. okay? The kings that didn't were the kings that all, had all kinds of problems. The kingdoms divided in two, etc. So here's what I'm saying. I'm saying this. The solution to America's problems right now is because maybe in Washington that particular king is not prepared to call for a day of fasting and prayer, then the governors right. of the states must. Now, mm -hmm. here's what I'm sensing. If they don't, and the storms come, and people get wiped out, then the governor himself is to blame, because he has now the solution. Call your state, call all the pastors together, say to them, open the churches, open the churches 
and allow the people to come and pray and declare from high up, from the king, because the king's word is law in terms of God, the way God sees things. So you're saying Governor McCrory whom I support and actually had on my TV show several years ago when he was mayor of Charlotte. He is a man of prayer. You're saying if he calls for a statewide day of prayer and fasting? Yeah, and humiliation. The storms won't hit North Carolina. They'll go past it. Wow. That's what I'm saying. That's what the Lord has told me. And that goes back to Texas. That goes back to all the states, especially the Midwest states. Mm -hmm. um, I was very surprised that the governor of Oklahoma hit had the first few... Uh, tornadoes and they never ever called anyone to pray and then the next lot came I was very surprised I thought that the first thing she would have done is said to the people particularly the pastors I'm instructing you to mm -hmm. call the churches to call the people mm -hmm. to come pray and fast mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. the storm must stop mm -hmm. you can try every other way the storms will not stop mm -hmm. until people mm -hmm. come and humble themselves and what does the scripture say Donica if my people call by my name will humble, humble themselves, themselves and seek my and face pray, and pray and I'll heal their land turn from their wicked ways exactly yeah. We need that type of thing. Just to go back, mm -hmm. in South Africa, um, we had a situation in the 80s where when we were fighting the, the so-called terrorists, we had no more ammunition left. Wow. And we as the white community didn't know what to do because we were surrounded by black forces in Angola, Mozambique, etc. And the state president at the time called for the country. He said, open the churches, let's pray and fast. Well, we did that. And two days mm -hmm. later, no more, no more black army was around us. They disappeared. We don't even know where they went. Mm -hmm. Now, that's what God does when a, when a nation begins to pray and fast. Mm -hmm. So I'm just saying, God's solution to this whole thing is, and it's not going to hurt anybody. If the guy doesn't want to go pray and fast, that's his baby. But the king, the governor of the state must call for it. And mm -hmm. God will honor the governor and state and there will be no major tragedies like in Oklahoma. And you're talking about not just from storms, but maybe... Uh, well, well, Terrorism whatever, or whatever the need is. Yeah. Whatever the need. Yeah. Okay, the remember, danger. Remember, there are three things that uh, indicate judgment. The one is violence in the streets. You had Boston. You had Mother, Mother's Day shooting. You had another one last week where five people were shot. I mean, that's violence in the street. The second one is famine. That means that nature will re re revolt against you. It's not just famine. It's tornadoes. It's hurricanes. It's winds. It's mm -hmm. uh, uh, volcanic explosions. Yes. And then the third one is pestilence, which is disease. Now, mm -hmm. they're already discovering diseases on the West Coast that they have no cure for. On the West Coast of America. Of America. So now what do you do about it? Now you can say, oh, well, I'm not going to do anything. But really, if you want them to be gone, you need to do exactly what I'm saying you, that you should do. It's come to a point where you call the guys and say, let's pray and mm -hmm. ask God to interfere. Mm -hmm. Let him step in and help mm -hmm. us in the situation because we don't know what we're going to do. Okay. And where is the biblical standard for that? Well, the biblical standard is, is Solomon. The biblical standard is David. I mean, most of the righteous kings, Jehu, mm -hmm. they all did that. They all called their people to pray and to fast. Mm -hmm. And um, there's, it's a biblical thing. And, and as you know, the Bible says that we should pray and fast and, and pray and watch. We must watch. Mm -hmm. And when the Lord starts to move, we will see his protection, mm -hmm. which is a major thing. Mm -hmm. And secondly, his provision. So you're saying that if these kings, Governor Pat, Lieutenant Governor Dan Forrest, mm. the kings in education, Dr. Morrison, mm. Harold Dixon, mm. and Melissa Dunlap, if these kings in their respective realms of authority declare a prayer and fasting according to your word that North Carolina could stand out as a beacon of light, because I doubt there are many states that are going to do that. Unfortunately, no. I doubt that. Somebody's got to take the lead. If North Carolina takes the lead, the other states will follow on. Yes, and I agree. And I do know uh, from the times I've met Governor Pat that he, he is a man who understands this kind of thing. He actually came on our TV show okay. when he was mayor and made a bid to the pastors of the city to reach out, that the faith community would reach out with, to the gang members and provide resolution for a political problem. Now, we know that God is apolitical. He really could care less about man's politics. He cares about his kingdom, which should bring us peace if we follow it, right? Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. And his and righteousness. All these things, and righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. So mm -hmm. everything that mm -hmm. North Carolina would need mm -hmm. would be provided if they would simply get to a point where the king says, the governor says, guys, call the people to pray and fast. It's got mm -hmm. to come from the top. Because mm -hmm. God wants to bless mm -hmm. Pat McCory. Yeah. 
You see? Yeah. It, the pastors, it's not about the pastors. You know, mm -hmm. we always say the, the, the religious leaders should do the work, but that's, that's like passing the buck. Mm -hmm. The politicians are there. They represent the people. Yes. They're the ones who should say, this situation, this is what we need, and then God will do the rest. Yes. Yes.